question comes from Mark Corot with Aviation Week. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Tom, and uh, Tom is a veteran on this flight, and Kayla is a freshman. How do you see this experience on this mission contributing to the future goal of Artemis uh, returning human explorers to the moon? Uh, this mission is critical, and that the main reason for that is three people who haven't flown in space before getting the experience they need that will prove so helpful when perhaps they'll be going to the moon. They'll play a part, uh, and maybe crew members as well. So I, I feel very blessed to be able to uh, uh, be with them, uh, provide whatever I can uh, as a veteran, uh, but otherwise just stay out of their way. They're operationally incredibly successful and uh, capable um, as it is. So what they need is the experience of space flight. Uh, it'll do NASA and the space station and the, our science output, do great things for that, but also for Artemis as well. So this is very important for that. And Justin on Twitter asks, what experiments will Crew-3 be performing? I'll take a, a first hack at that. Um, there's so much going on up there. It's uh, something we could each talk about for about an hour. Um, there are experiments going on outside and inside the space station that we just tend or that we watch. The alpha magnetic spectrometer looking for uh, the dark matter origins of the universe. The cold atom lab, which is trying to create a, uh, creating an environment that's so super cold that you can actually study um, atomic particles um, uh, close to their quantum state. A lot of medical experiments. We're testing out medical devices. Uh, I'm going to be working with a, um, a muscle sensor that um, will help us figure out how uh, muscles atrophy in space, but also is a tech development for this uh, device so that people can have these evaluations done when they're in ICUs or out in the field. Uh, there'll be ultrasound going on, lots of uh, material science. Um, I love to, uh, to work with and talk about the um, uh, magnetic levitation uh, experiments that are taking fluids and using zero G and magnetic containment to really study how fluids in a sphere uh, react with different temperatures. Um, you know, Matthias is a, a PhD material science and he, he probably would love to throw in some of those answers as well. Well, I think you covered the fear, Tom. <laughs> okay, and our next question comes from Paul Brinkman with UPI. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, my question is for Kayla. Um, as the youngest uh, member of the crew, um, maybe you'll be on the moon in a few years, but um, what do you think about the possibility of flying to a private space station um, after ISS is retired in eight to 10 years and whenever that happens? Um, would you like to do that, and uh, how do you think that would change the nature of the experience? You know, I think that's something we've started to wrap our heads around as we think about what will happen when we don't have the amazing platform, the International Space Station, which we're hoping to continue f to fly at least through 2030. So um, we're hoping the space station will be around for a little while longer. Um, but like you mentioned, we're kind of at the dawn of a new era where we're bringing commercial partners into a low Earth orbit economy to include partnering with companies who are interested in building destinations in low Earth orbit like commercial space stations. Um, and I think going forward, we can imagine a world where we continue to visit those space stations as NASA astronauts to do science and also to train for future exploration missions. Uh, for me, my inspiration to apply to the NASA program was recognizing all the parallels between serving aboard a submarine, which is what I did before becoming to, coming to NASA, and the space station itself. Um, and so since coming here, as the Artemis program has really come into focus and become a big part of what we're hoping to do next. In fact, Artemis 1 is set to launch during our time on the space station, so we're really hoping we're on an orbit to uh, catch some of that launch. Um, but we're really starting to think about Artemis and how to prepare for it, and I think for um, those of uh, the rookies on this flight, we're really thinking about this as the best way to train for those future exploration missions, to learn from the fantastic experience we have from operating the space station continuously for 20 years, learn from veteran flyers like Tom, um, and then also start thinking about how the technology we're using on the space station can be applied on the moon and eventually on a trip to Mars. And next question is from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Hey, 
Okay, thanks. I was going to ask Caleb that, roughly the same question, but let me ask it to Raja. Is your, you're both in the in the Artemis cadre. I assume that nobody's got cold feet, and both of you would like to go to the moon someday. So can you just – I mean, I know the next flight's the one that counts, but, but what do you think about that long term? Uh, well, I think, like uh, Kayla said, I think that m one of the most exciting pieces of science for me that we're doing up there is we call it ECLIS, which is basically life support uh, type experiments. But it has both a, a terrestrial application for Earth, but also, to your point, uh, Artemis. And so, uh, you know, we'll be looking at uh, new waste management systems uh, that involve uh, better ways and more reliable ways to process waste. And kind of what's key there is to get to the moon and to stay there, which is the goal of Artemis, not to just go and come back, but to stay there and to go to Mars. You need more reliable equipment and higher recovery rates than what we have now. So, you know, right now we recover between 70, 90 percent of the water that's uh, that's wasted on the space station that comes out of us, um, and we need to get that closer to 98 percent. And so, some of the work we're doing up there, and some of the equipment we'll be working on and using, is designed and built to try to test that out. And so, not only is it exciting because we're part of the group that's helping, you know, as we look at Artemis designs and architecture, uh, but it also helps here on Earth. So, I mean, if we could recover wastewater and and have almost a closed loop cycle that would, would solve a whole lot of problems here on Earth as well. And so I think for you know all of us in the office, uh, you know the Artemis team per se is just some people that have been helping, but really the whole office is, is involved with the Artemis program. And so when we're not assigned and getting ready for a mission, what we're doing in the office is helping with different programs, whether that's the lunar lander, the HLS, uh, the Gateway, the Orion, the SLS, which is the rocket. Uh, so you know astronauts in our office are involved in all these programs, and then. You know, as you mentioned, and you're very rightfully, when you're assigned a mission, that's your, your main focus. And so, uh, so right now, our, our eyes are on, on successfully executing, getting to and from the ISS safely, integrating with uh, Expedition 66, and you know, making as much life-changing science happen as we can during the six months we're, we're lucky to have up there. And our next question comes from Whitney on Twitter, and she asks, what places on Earth are you most excited to see from space and photograph from the cupola? I think I'll take this question. It's uh, before becoming an astronaut, I actually fulfilled my big dream of traveling around the world um, for one entire year. And now from space, I obviously want to revisit these same places. And it's like a place in every continent of this beautiful planet. So I think uh, I also want to discover Africa because I have like, I haven't seen a lot of Africa and the perspective from space, the third dimension, that's something really fabulous. And every time I think of it, I get, I get goosebumps all over my skin. And our next question comes from Marcia Dunn with the Associated Press. Yes, um, for Raja, I'm wondering, um, yesterday we heard from the NASA managers that they're, they're taking all lessons learned from the last Dragon flight with the Inspiration4 crew. And I'm wondering if you've talked with uh, Jared Isaacman about uh, his trip and whether there's anything to be learned from their three-day journey. Thanks. Uh, so we had a chance to meet with uh, some of the Inspiration4 crew before we launched. We haven't talked to them since they've been back, I think, because they've been pretty busy. Uh, if you follow the news and social media in terms of, uh, uh, you know, sharing all the, all the joy and, you know, experiments they did up there, we definitely have had a lot of interaction between SpaceX and NASA. And so uh, even though that was a private mission, there is, uh, you know, it's a very, it's a common vehicle, the same vehicle we used on a previous NASA flight. And so there has been a whole bunch of engineering back and forth discussions, lessons learned, past us that uh, involve making you know improvements to our vehicle as well and the fleet and so there's a very close relationship there um, and so yeah we haven't talked to Jared but I there has been uh, daily uh, back and forth between NASA and SpaceX about um, where to make future fixes and enhancements uh, and improvements and our next question comes from Dane on Twitter what will the crew be dressing for for Halloween I don't think we've necessarily decided yet, but I heard a rumor that Mark Vandehei, who is currently on the space station, might have some plans in store for our Halloween costumes. So I think we have a maybe have a surprise in store when we uh, cross the hatch for Halloween. 
All right, and that's all the time we have for today. I just want to thank our Crew 3 astronauts for joining us and everyone who tuned in and asked questions through our various platforms to join in in our conversation today. Be sure to tune in to watch this crew launch in Crew Dragon Endurance to the International Space Station in the early hours on October 30th. You can watch live online at nasa.gov, on NASA TV, or by following NASA on social media. That'll do it for our press conference today. Thanks for joining.